risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Bless our God, you peoples. Make the voice of his praise to be heard who holds our souls in life and will not allow our feet to slip. For you, O God, have proved us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let enemies ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows, which I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you sacrifices of fat beasts with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I called out to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. If I had found evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me. He has attended the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld his love for me. A reading from 1 Peter. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for what, doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water, and baptism, which is prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven, and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, If you love me, you will obey what I command, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be with you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have you noticed that throughout the gospel, Jesus rarely says the phrase, worship me. But he does quite often says the phrase, follow me which I think is a more difficult invitation. And this is where I think many of our churches have gone astray because we've chosen to only worship Jesus, all the while completely and conveniently forgetting to follow Jesus. So what does it look like to follow Jesus? Well, in the beginning of our gospel reading, Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And so what were his commandments? Love. To love God with all that we are and all that we have. And to love our neighbors. So then what does it look like to follow Jesus? Love. A life that is compelled by love. A life that follows wherever love leads us. Even if it leads us to places and people we don't want to go to. Which brings me to our reading in Acts. And, and Morris Hill. And Paul. And now Paul is as serious as a Jew a, that a Jew can be. And here he is surrounded by Gentiles and surrounded by idols. And remember, Paul is deeply formed and deeply shaped by the Hebrew Bible. So of course, the, the sight of all these idols are greatly distressing to him. But yet Paul does something remarkably, remarkably productive with his distress which is something that I haven't quite figured it out yet, and which is something that many of us actually haven't figured out yet. How do we take our distress and our anger, and how do we turn it into something remarkably, remarkably productive? I mean, think about all the anger and distress that we've witnessed this week and this past few weeks. And, and they've all amounted to absolutely nothing productive, really. Maybe just a few snarky, social media comments and posts here and there. Uh, Paul, he doesn't turn away from the idolaters. He doesn't turn away from the people who are the source of his offense and the source of his distress and the source of his anger. He doesn't turn away from the Gentiles, but instead he turns towards them. See, this is what following Jesus looks like. This is what the gospel demands. This is what Jesus commands. A reaching toward, a reaching out. See, Paul is reaching out to those Gentiles who couldn't be more different from him, his faith and his ideology. What do you say to those who couldn't be more different from you? What do you say to those who are fundamentally and radically different from you? I mean, let's be honest. I've never been one to mince words. Most likely, if I were to be confronted by someone who is fundamentally and radically different from me, I probably would say nothing. To, I'd probably try to ignore them, to, to put space between us, to differentiate myself from them. And if I were to say something, it really would be productive. It would be something snarky, mixed with uh, sarcasm, said, and jest, which has always been my verbal cocktail of choice. But the Spirit, the Spirit desires for something else. See, the Spirit wants the listeners of Paul's words not only hear them, but to receive God's invitation. The, Spirit, uh, the Spirit's word spoken through Paul is a word of desire, aiming to draw these Gentiles closer to Jesus, into the body of Jesus. What we see, what we hear, what we read is that God wants Gentiles 
God desires those who desire idols. God desires those who are fundamentally and radically different from who we are. And see, Paul's speech to the Athenians is driven by this irrepressible longing of God to embrace the idolaters, to embrace the Gentiles, to embrace those who are fundamentally and radically different. And Paul, in this moment, is, is caught up in, in the Spirit who is doing something new. See, Paul doesn't turn the Gentiles' idolatry towards God's condemnation, but Paul turns them towards God's invitation. And the hope being that God's invitation will draw the idolaters away from idols and into the presence and body of Christ. I mean, talk about the impossible, right? I can't speak for you, but I know that more often than not, particularly when I'm offended, particularly when I'm distressed, particularly when I'm angry, I've done more to keep people away from me and from Jesus Christ than, than to draw them into the community, into the body of Christ. And I have a sneaking suspicion that I'm not the only one who struggled with this. But what may be impossible with our own strength is possible through God. And Paul is a perfect example of that story. Earlier in Acts chapter 7, Paul stood there holding the coats of faithful and zealous Jews as they picked up stones to stone a follower of Jesus Christ, to stone Stephen. And now here is Paul, once again, angry and surrounded by stones. And yet this time the Spirit leads Paul into a different direction. The Spirit leads Paul towards the source of his offense and anger and distress. And Paul, and Paul is courageous enough to follow where the Spirit leads, to go where love will be prevalent. And this is why love, real love, is, is very inconvenient for us to embody, for us to be compelled by, for us to follow. Which is why following Jesus is often very inconvenient and worshiping Jesus is easy and preferable. I mean, come on, worshiping Jesus today could be as, as simple as turning on our internet browser, listening to the pastor preach while we're surfing Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, or whatever your choice of, of social media. And, and, then, and then when everything's done, we, we check off, I worship Jesus this week. And I think we all know that that's not what following Jesus looks like. Following Jesus is embodying love, being compelled by love, and going wherever love is leading us to. So how will you follow Jesus this week? Where will you follow love to this week? How will you invite others, especially those who are different from you, into the body of Christ this week? May I suggest that this week, and hopefully for the rest of our lives, but particularly this week, that we think about following Jesus by asking ourselves the real questions that Henry Nouwen thought that we should ask. Did I offer peace today? Did I bring a smile to someone's face? Did I say words of healing? Did I let go of my anger and my resentment? Did I forgive? Did I love? May we follow Jesus in such a manner, in such a way that we answer yes to those questions every single day of our lives. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. 
He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gracious God, we pray for your one holy Catholic Church and for your people everywhere. We thank you for the perfect sacrifice of your Son for our sake. May we spread the love of Christ through word and deed in all the world. We rejoice in the power of the resurrected Christ who overcame death, hell and the grave to secure our salvation. In your great mercy, we pray. O oh God, bind us together in one love for each other and in our love for you, that our divisions may cease and our love for you prevail. Thank you for the leaders of the world, our nation and our community, Guide and direct them in all their decisions. And in your mercy we pray. Teach us to love and care for the earth for the sake of our children and our children's children. Thank you for life, health, and strength to care for the world and your people. We rejoice in the strength of humanity to overcome adversity and thrive even as we struggle. And in your name we pray. We continue to pray for those whose lives have been affected by crisis, especially Harvey and COVID-19, that we keep them and their needs ever before you. We place in your loving care those who have needs, and we place those needs for others even before our own. Our first responders who work in the areas of service in our community those who seek to heal us in mind, body, and spirit, surround them with your loving arms of protection. Thank you for blessing us as a congregation to be a blessing to those around us. We rejoice in our strength and ability to continue to serve those who need our help. Open our eyes and hearts to the many ways we still can serve you, knowing that we cannot do everything but all can do something. And in your mercy we pray. We give thanks for all the blessings of this life for Bert Gulledge, Jeanette Merritt, Jackie DeLucia, Shannon Green, Craig Harlan, Gene O'Neill, Bonnie Bailey, Lynn Minter Jr., Bob Butterick, James Hendricks, and Jacob Reynolds who celebrate their birthdays this week, and Stephen Kelsey Klebowski, Bruce and Kathy Mead, Andy and Tara Torres, and Mark and Tish Harney, who celebrate their anniversaries this week. And it's in your mercy we pray. We place in your loving care those who have lost their jobs, the unemployed and the underemployed, those who continue to struggle, those who are anxious and isolated. Pour yourself into every area of the lives and meet their every need. We pray for Maggie, Shannon, Stacy, Gracie, Desi, Dane and Doug, Tom, those who return to work and those who have lost loved ones. Those who are sick and those who are recovering from sickness, may they know and experience your healing presence in their lives. Thank you for the knowledge that you, O oh God, are always with us. We rejoice in your continual power and presence in our life. And it's in your mercy we pray. We pray for all the departed. May the souls of the departed rest in peace. And this in your mercy we pray. Finally, help us, O oh God, to forgive one another as you have forgiven us. Remind us, O oh God, to pray for one another. Thank you for the cloud of witnesses who intercede on our behalf, 
even now and forevermore. Bind us together, O God, with the uniting power of your Holy Spirit, that whether we are together or apart, we, may, we remain bound as one body in you. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. <laughs>